So hi, I'm Jeff Lizowitz. I'm here with brownpapertickets.com. I'm also the author of Not Effing Around, the No Bullshit Guide to Getting Your Creative Dreams Off the Ground. You know I love talking to creative people. <laughs> say pow, hello. Hello, hello, how are you? Good, you're creative, you're awesome. What's going on? Oh man, gosh, yeah. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> All right. Um, you cool. know, it's, uh, yeah, I don't know why it's so weird to, to hear that, but um, yeah, no, things are going really good. Um, I don't know where to start. Where do you want me to start? Okay. I want to know, what do you do creatively? What's your thing? What's your, what are you all about? Okay. Um, well, I'm an actress. Um, I'm on a show called Z Nation right now. Yeah. Uh, sci-fi. Yeah, we're in our second season, and I play the character of Cassandra. Um, I didn't always know that I wanted to be an actor. Um, that's a lie. I always knew that I wanted to be an actor, but I was in denial about it for a really long time. Um, and obviously, you know, obviously I don't think I would have gotten this role, um, or gotten as far as I have in my career if I hadn't, um, sort of gotten out of that state of denial and uh, stopped, I guess, what you would say, fucking around and <laughs> effing around, beep, beep, um, and, uh, you know, sort of kicking, kicking that dream, that desire into gear. How did you, how did you get out of denial? Um, I'm so glad you asked this. Okay, so this goes back to, um, this is like perfect timing right now because yesterday was October 1st. And I started this ritual of, um, I have these vision boards where I write my desires, things that I want um, to happen in my life down the road. Um, and so I was looking at them. Um, I decided that every month I'm going to go back to these boards. Mm -hmm. And there are a ton of them. So uh, it takes a lot of time. But I'm going to go back to the, these boards and um, take a look at them. Sort of, I guess, hold myself accountable for the things that I've written down. Um, but then ask, you know, re-ask these questions about what my truths are. Um, so to answer your question specifically, um, you know, bef I, I really genuinely think that before you can go after your dreams, you have to be clear on what those dreams are. You have to be really honest about what those dreams and desires are. And I hate to even say the word dream because it seems like it's something unattainable. Um, but I really just got, I got fucking honest with myself. Um, I have a great life coach and her motto is tell the fucking truth. <laughs> I hope that you don't have any kids at home watching this right now. There's a lot of bleeping going on. Um, but you know, it's a really simple, straightforward, no BS motto. And that is tell the effing truth, no matter what that truth may be. Um, and so I sat down and I asked myself, I was in kind of a state of things where I was in my late twenties. I had chosen fashion design, wasn't happy doing fashion design. I'd been working as a server for a couple of years. Um, I wanted to shoot myself. Sorry, people <laughs> who I've served. <laughs> um, it's not that I didn't enjoy the people all the time, but you know, it just kind of gets to be what they call the grind. Sure. Um, so anyways, I was in a space where I was like, you know, what do I really want for my life? Where am I going? What are my desires? And I felt really bound by money. Um, I didn't want to go and start working at McDonald's and I didn't, I don't if there's anything wrong with that. Um, but you know, I didn't, I was really stuck because I had to decide what career path I was taking. Um, and so I asked myself, what would I do if I didn't have to worry about money? Um, because that was really dragging me down. And I think that it drags a lot of creative people down is the reality is we have to, you know, finance our lifestyle, finance our art, right? Mm -hmm. Um, finance our creative juices, finance, you know, a roof over our head, you know, transportation, just even the basic things. So I just took that out of the equation. I asked myself, what would I do if I won the lotto? I want all the money in the world and I didn't have to worry about money. What would be my real inner true desire? And the first thing that came up, no bullshit, was that I would move to LA and pursue acting. 
And that was a really big light bulb moment for me because anyone who's an actor, and you don't even have to be an actor, I'm sure people have heard the stories of how hard it is, how much rejection you faced, how many years of turmoil you can put into it and maybe get nothing back in return. Um, so to know that I was willing to face all of that, all the rejection, the failure, the possibility of failure, um, all those things, despite having all the money in the world, it meant to me like that was my, you know, my big aha moment. Like, oh, so when having all the money in the world doesn't actually matter, what matters is that I really want to pursue acting. I really um, want to face this fear. Um, and I think what happened for me, a big thing for me, because people bring up fear a lot. They bring up, um, you know, I guess bravery. I hear the word bravery a lot and um, wow, you overcame so much. The truth for me, bottom line, was it was scarier not to pursue my desires, my dream, my honesty. It was scarier not to be honest with myself. I literally envisioned myself, you know, years down the line on my deathbed and I, I could see that I would regret it. I could see that I would regret never pursuing it, no matter what the outcome was. And even talking about it kind of gives me chills because it's really powerful um, and scary and painful when you're that honest with yourself. So um, I think my answer to you is, you know, the, the biggest way to stop effing around in anything, not just in the creative field, but, you know, in terms of career, health, finances, whatever it is, is to tell the fucking truth. Um, and we all know it. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, we don't necessarily need to go out and read a bunch of things or get a lot of self-help books because it's telling the, the truth for ourselves and that's going to be different for everybody. Um, so that's yeah. your answer. That's a hell of an answer and I really? love it. <laughs> and I think you're right. When you start to frame your life with, you know, the fact that it is limited, you know, we are going to die right? That sort of brings things into perspective. What do you really want? You know, yeah. there's only so yeah, many... and even if, you know, even if you're not going to die right away, it's like, you know, what are you, what are you going to think at the age of 60? Are you going to say, you know, man, I'm glad I, I, I never left for me. Like, I'm glad I never left Seattle, that I stayed and, you know, continued my, you know, pursued a different career. I don't know what that would have been because again, that wasn't my truth. Um, so it wasn't, it's not even about dying. You don't have to get like, you know, um, <laughs> what's the word? You don't have to even get, um, what's that word where it's like, it's related to death. You don't have to get morbid about it. Mm, I guess. Yes. Um, but you do just have to be real about yourself and yeah, look into the future to mm -hmm. some extent, um, and say, you know, what would really make me happy? Am I, am I going to be happy with this car, this house, or whatever. And, you know, so for some people, the answer is yes. And I'm not going to lie, you know, my brother has um, a great career. He's got the family. He's got this huge house in Shoreline that's like a mini mansion. And, you know, um, there's times where I visited him and I asked myself, would I have preferred this life? And that's great because we constantly have to be checking in with ourselves because our truth might change depending on where we are in our life, which is why um, I was saying this is perfect timing because once a month now, it's this ritual where I go back and I look at my truths um, to keep myself in check, but also to see like, are they still my truths? Um, so it's okay to ask yourself and to change your mind. But um, for me, I looked at my brother's big house, you know, that he's got to clean or somebody's got to clean and my screaming nieces who I love and their gigantic backyard. And I thought, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy where I am, you know, maybe somewhere down the line that truth will change. But, um, yeah, you know, continuously being honest with yourself and telling the truth to, to nobody but yourself at, you know, first and foremost. Fantastic. Great stuff. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. You're okay. welcome. Yeah. So you told yourself the truth. You took action on it. You moved to LA. You did the auditions, all that kind of stuff. And you got on the TV show. Awesome. It's 
what some would consider successful. You're a successful <laughs> actress. Like, that's great. But I want to know, how do you define success as a creative person? Well, I just want to take this back just a little bit yeah. because, um, you know, for me, the process itself is so important for people to know, like, really what the process was. Um, yes, I got honest with myself. And then I, you know, which – Unfortunately, it had to do with finances. In order to move to LA, even though I didn't want to think about finances, I had to look at my finances. I was in debt and I needed to save money um, in order to get there. So I created an Excel spreadsheet that tracked. This is not for everybody, but I just want to let people know that it wasn't like, I said I was going to do this and then I did it. It did not happen that way. It, it took about a year, which actually is an amazing feat for me to pay off my debt and for me to save up enough money to move to LA. But um, I moved into my girlfriend's living room. Um, there was a summer, a couple of months, where I didn't drive my car, took my insurance off, um, and just rode the bus. Thankfully, I worked a block away so um, from home, so that wasn't bad. But you know, every day, I constantly looked at that Excel spreadsheet to see where my progress was in terms of, you know, going to, getting, getting to LA. Um, but yeah, so once I did that, I moved to LA. It was really rough because I didn't have a plan. Once I landed here, I had a plan on how to get there. Didn't have a plan on once I landed. <laughs> um, and it's funny because I don't, you know, when you're in the thick of it as an artist, you forget how much you've done and how far you've come. So I think that's a really, it's another really important element of success actually is acknowledging your success, acknowledging what you've done. I think it's really hard for us creative types um, to, to realize that. Uh, Ira Glass has such a great, he had this great talk. Are you familiar with it? Uh -oh. About you know, I don't know what it's called, but he had this great talk about how as artists, we have this vision of where we want to be. And when we start creating work, it's like not there. It's like the where we want to be is here and the work that we're creating is right here. And so a lot of times people give up, um, you know, but the truth is like in order to get there, we have to keep doing the work. Um, but we don't always see it. You know, we don't always acknowledge that, that, that journey. Um, so I think a big part of success is what well, I was gonna. The first thing that came to mind was happiness, but you can't be happy unless you're aware of what you're happy about. <laughs> you know, <laughs> unless you're aware, you can't just be like, "I'm just happy." No, you have to like really acknowledge what you've done. And I, for, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I forget it all the time. Um, I'm not where I want to be as an artist fully. Um, but I get people reminding me all the time, this conversation is a great example, this interview of like, you know, reminding me that, oh, I have achieved some level of success. Absolutely. I set some goals, you know, and you're like, yeah, hello. But yeah. I, it's like, like, as an, you know, as an artist, we're just so into it. Um, we sometimes forget. So I think the first thing is acknowledging that you've had success. Um, you know, for me, it's, um, success is, gosh, that's a tough question. You know, honestly, I've got to be happy with my work. I, I really, really do. And I know that I'm the toughest critic. Um, but I've seen bits and pieces of my work where I think, wow, that's really believable. Um, and I really gave into that moment and I was honest and then I've seen parts of my work where I'm like, oh, okay, you did the acting thing, you know. Um, so I don't think that it's impossible because I, you know, because I have seen bits of my work that I did enjoy, that I did like. I don't think that I'm so biased. I don't think it's impossible for me to be happy with it. But um, that is one one element of me feeling successful is um, being happy with my own work. Um, being able to share experiences with my family and friends because of that work, you know, um, nobody wants to go to a movie premiere on their own. I mean, maybe some people do, but um, I love having my friends and family there. Um, 
doing these kinds of things, you know, being able to give back in some way, um, it makes you feel like the journey is full circle. Uh, talking to talking to other artists, um, talking to other to, to other creative types, and and even just fans, you know. Um, I don't know if I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel so successful, but I do feel happy and um, warm inside when a fan comes up to me and they say that I've made their day or that you know they really enjoy watching me, and you can really just see how genuine and excited they are to meet you, and you're and you're just you're like, I'm just a normal person. There's nothing special about me, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, so that's a pretty, a pretty um, layered answer, I suppose. There's not one thing that makes me feel successful necessarily. But I guess if I were to put it in one word, it would just be happiness, you know, being happy with where I'm at. Fantastic. Beautiful. I love it. Oh, man, I feel like I'm giving you such long-winded answers. You got, you're full of goodness and wisdom. Oh, gosh. I love talking to you. Oh, thank you. I love talking with you. Okay, here's the next question. So, we just talked about success, right? Yeah. Well, as we know, lots of artists, whether it's actors or photographers, writers, dancers, whatever it is, we experience lots of failure. What have you learned from failure? That is such a great question. Oh, my gosh. Hmm. I sometimes welcome failure into my process um, because I uh, I think the most important thing that I learned from it is that you don't die. You know, you're still alive. You're still here. The world hasn't ended. Um, you know, I'm thinking of like a relationship or just like interactions with with um, people where you know you're scared to talk to them or you're scared they don't like you back. And it's like they don't. But guess what? Somebody somebody else likes you. Or like the world. It's just like the world continues. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think what I've learned from Failure is to keep going because this is such a good question, Jeff. Um, Yeah, because like I said, the world doesn't end. You know, your life doesn't end. Your process doesn't end. It's not, you know, the final word. It's not the finale of of your work or your show. Um, I feel like I should have another answer, but that's, that's what's coming to me right now is that, you know, Failure teaches me that it's not that bad and that um, to keep going. And then I think I think what it is, I think why I'm getting I'm getting stumped is because there are so many different types of failure. Um, so of course there are so many different types of answer to what you can learn from failure because it, it's all based off circumstance, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's kind of what's stumping me. Um, so I would say two things, that there is always something to learn from every situation, whether it's good or bad. Um, uh, but definitely in failure, you know, uh, I think it's smart to, to take note of, of what went wrong. Um, and I hate, I hate even saying what went wrong. You know, I don't like the, the terms wrong and right um, because I really do believe that everything's right or the moment that we're in. Um, But yeah, going back to my first answer, it would be that um, failures, I was going to say something really cheesy. We like cheese. Something like like failure is success. Failure is success, you know, in disguise. (laughs) Oh, check out that quote. I mean, I... (laughs) You know, really is failure is is, is success in disguise. Um, you just it's just a matter of switching your perception to seeing it as, as something else. You know, it's it's failure is is I'm not I'm not just saying this. I really mean it because I had a shitty time the first year I was in LA, and um, I I get a lot of nos. I still get nos. You know, in my career. Um, 
but yeah, like failures are, failures are like chunks of gold. Like I'm, I'm not shitting you. <laughs> no pun intended. It, it is. It's just, you couldn't ask for something better, you know, um, because I don't think that people, I don't think that people who have immediate success, I don't think as humans we're built that way. I think that we are, our bodies are built to learn and to um, to make progress and for struggle. And so I don't really see a lot of people who like, you know, who've had a lot of like immediate success with no sort of turmoil with 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 um no sort of drama or or anything to overcome or any hurdles i've never i can't say that those people are very inspiring um or ha- or or happy um you know i think that that pain and those struggles it makes us human it makes us artists um you know, obviously, I feel very passionate about the word failure. <laughs> but yeah, it's failure is success in disguise. You know, it's just another step towards towards success. Beautiful. Thank you. I love I it. I love him. Love it. <laughs> okay. So in between success and failure, I might say, there is the comfort zone. Right. Yes, yeah, comfort zone. Tell me, uh, talk to me about that. What do you mean by comfort zone? Comfort zone. Well, the way I see the comfort zone is doing or being in such a way that you are comfortable. So, you know, perhaps as an actor, you know, you kind of do the things you know how to do, you're, you know, you're comfortable with, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Stepping out into a different role, you know, a different kind of role could be outside of the comfort zone. Right. right, doing something that you don't know how to do is basically what it is. Absolutely. So, how do you feel about the comfort zone? Um, ambiguous. <laughs> I feel ambiguous about it. You know, on the one hand, um, gosh, it's all, again, it's all back to perception and 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 words. You know, um, I don't think that we should be struggling all the time either. I, um, you know, I said that I think that in some instance, you know, humans are, are, are built to, to make progress with themselves and to have a little bit of struggle, but I don't think we should be doing that all the time. There's got to be some kind of balance. So, you know, it goes back to acknowledging your success. Um, a big part of me, this is me, this is not everybody I know. I have a girlfriend who, well, no, even my, my girlfriend who works really hard, a big part of my work requires a lot of rest, um, a lot of um, honoring of my body, my voice, um, my mind. Uh, so it's not bad to be comfortable uh, for a certain amount of time. You know, I guess you've got to uh, enjoy your spoils, right? Take the time to enjoy the successes that you've experienced. But I think this goes back to telling the truth. I think at some point, you know, as an artist, uh, again, you review your truth and you say, am I too comfortable? Um, Am I just right? Am I happy exactly where I am? Or do I, do I myself personally need to challenge myself? Do I need to dig deeper? Um, And that's going to be different for everybody. So, um, I don't even, I'm going to just, I'm just going to use this example and I don't know if it's good or bad. Jessica Alba started off as an actress and, um, she doesn't do as much acting as she used to. Right. And at one point I was like thinking to myself, oh, she's got the easy life. She's got, she's taking it comfortably because, you know, she's made all these, she's made all this money from her movies and whatnot. And, um, you know, she doesn't have to, and she gets paid who knows how much to open these parties. But, you know, little did I know that the next challenge, the next step in her life was her company, Honest, which has expanded um, from children's baby products to now beauty. And so, um, again, she at some point, I assume, not that Jessica and I are friends or anything like that, but I assume at some point she looked at her career, looked at her life and asked herself, what is her truth at this moment? Is it still acting? 
Um, you know, maybe it is in some aspect, but I think that, you know, for her, her next challenge, you know, she didn't stay in that comfort zone of I'm just going to live off my beauty, I'm going to live off my movies, I'm going to live off, you know, showing up at parties and getting paid. I'm, I'm going to do this thing as well. So um, I think she's an, she's an example of somebody who steps out, stepped outside of her comfort zone and did something different, you know. Um, again, it's constantly checking back in with yourself because your truth, your truth changes, you know. Um, Congratulations if it doesn't. Congratulations if you're that person like Meryl Streep who obviously has only ever had one, well, I shouldn't say has only ever had one truth, but, you know, um, phenomenal actress and has been doing that really uh, most most of her most of her life. Now I just feel bad. I'm talking about people who I have no, I don't know these people. I don't know what Meryl Streep really does in, in her life. She probably does a lot of other things. So, <laughs> who knows? Who knows what Meryl's up to these Meryl days? Street. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> okay, got another question for you. Okay. So, word on the street has it that art and, art and creativity has a sort of healing aspect to it. Have you found that your creativity, your acting has had a healing aspect for you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, word on the street. That's really cute. Who? Can you cite your um, your resources? Cite my sources. <laughs> yeah, Oops. cite your sources. I like a bibliography at the end of this interview. <laughs> um, absolutely. A hundred percent in so many different ways. I was just thinking about another sort of cliche um, saying, and that is the truth will set you free. Um, I think my truth sets me free. Um, and being an artist, um, I think we're constantly having to ask ourselves what our truth is. Um, and you know, when you're around good artists, they push you and they question what your truth is as well. Um, so I think, you know, from a mental aspect, which let's all, I think we can all agree that that aspect is very powerful. Um, it's been absolutely very healing for me. Let me see if I can give you an example. Um, well, a great example would be that my character Cassandra um, on Z Nation, she's a very, she's a naturally sensual character. Um, you know, we, when we first meet her, we find her in a cage. She's very animalistic, very raw. Um, and then we discover, spoiler alert, um, that she's uh, with a family of cannibals and that in her, you know, part-time hours, she moonlights as a prostitute, is probably a drug addict. Um, you know, all of these things which are really intense, especially for someone to have as their first major television role. Like, I get to play... A prostitute, apoc apocalyptic prostitute, drug addict, slash, pro um, slash cannibal. Um, and I'm not going to lie, it was a very intense role for me, and I had a very hard time in season one um, because some of those things affected me personally. And um, I had no choice but to look at the truth of that because it was affecting my work on set. And um, so I went and I got help, talked to my acting coach um, about in what ways it affected me personally on a personal level and why I was having trouble coming to terms with this character. You know, a big part of acting is that we don't judge our characters we, because then we become the audience. We're no longer an actor, we're the audience now. Um, and even then I think it's important to play a character where the audience you know, is, has compassion for that person. So, um, so I'm all over the map here because I wasn't prepared to give you this kind of answer, but I, yeah, I did, I did a lot of personal work, um, not just acting work. I did a lot of personal work to overcome my fears, to overcome my personal hangups about, you know, what my character had to do to survive. Um, and I f definitely feel like I'm a better person for it. Um, and I definitely feel that facing that challenge made, made me stronger. Um, so uh, it's a process. I'm not going to say that 
and this isn't just like a like a disclaimer so I can be shitty to somebody later, but I mean I'm not perfect. <laughs> you know, sometimes we give it I'm not perfect. So if I'm shitty to you, disclaimer. Um no, I mean really truly I'm not perfect. I am still in that process. You know, we just shot that last year, season one last year, and now we're in season two and then once season two came about, I really got into the work, really got into the process. Um, so yeah, it's been it's been healing for me, um, for sure. Great, that's great yeah. to hear. Good, thank you. It's, yeah. Okay, so when when a lot of artists of different kinds start mm-hmm. out, one of the things that I think stops a lot of people is doubt and fear, right, about yeah. what they're doing. So. In your process, do you come up against doubt and fear about your and, and, <laughs> and how do you push through that? I do. Yeah, to answer your question, I do. And um, like I mentioned, season one, I had a lot of doubt and I had a lot of fear, and that doubt and fear affected my work immensely. And, and in my opinion, not a good way. The work ended up being fine, but my mental journey, my mental pr- uh, process through all of that was, you know, awful, shitty. Oh my God, I think about it and I want to like rip my brains out because it was so, it, it just, you know, um, mental to mental, the brain bashing that I was doing. And <laughs> no pun intended since I'm on a zombie show, but. Um, How do I push through doubt and fear? I want to say that there is something innate in me. Um, I want to say that I was born a very happy embryo and that um, positivity has always sort of been in, in my universe, within my gravitational pull. I don't... I don't know if that's fair to say, though, you know, um, this idea of like things that are innate in us. Not that I disagree with it either. I think that there are certain things innate with us. Um, How do I push through? It's a really good question. well, okay, so the truth, the truth is there is a part of me that, that has always felt like, has always felt that, um, this is so hard, this is such a hard question. How do I push through doubt and fear? First and foremost, there's always been inside something inside of me that has felt um, that uh, crap. Okay, let me start off with a quote. It's not what you want, it's what you believe. And there has been something inside of me that has always believed in certain dreams. I won't tell you exactly what those are because I'm still sort of aspiring towards them. Um, But that belief is what keeps me moving forward because Yes, I'm human and I get down on myself about um, where I am in my process and and where I am as an artist. Um, But I have this belief in my mind um, that that's not where I'm going to end up. I can clearly, I have a picture in my mind, you know, of where I want to be, of where I'm going to be. And I think that that pushes me forward. because it's this sort of, it's, it's, it's this unexplainable belief that I have inside of me. Um, while I'm telling you this though, I'm also keeping in mind, well, what if somebody out there doesn't have that? What if somebody out there grew up entirely different from me um, and, you know, for whatever reason doesn't have that belief? Um, that innate thing in them that tells them like, nope, I'm different. Um, and this is going to be my path, and I'm going to be here, and no matter what else happens along this journey, that's where I'm going to be. So for people who, who don't have that, 
that's it's hard for me. I want to speak to those people, but it's hard for me to because I don't know their life and I don't want to pretend that I do. But I guess I would say, you know, um, you got to go back to the truth. You got to go back to the truth of what you really want, you know. Um, and hopefully that truth isn't that you suck <laughs> and that you're never going to make it. Hopefully the truth is, you know, that you want X, Y, Z. Um, so that's, that's what propels you forward. Um, it's different for everybody, I suppose. You know, kind of just going back to what you were saying about failure. Um, what can you learn from failure? Well, it's going to be different based off what that actual failure was. Um, for me, what keeps me moving forward is that I just have that belief that um, I have this certain path and I have this certain life and um, it's something that I, I need to fulfill so that I don't live um, a life lived in fear, a life half lived, a life in regret. Does that make sense? That was long. Wow. That was hard for me. You just keep on asking me all these hard questions. <laughs> They're you're doing, great. You're doing great. Those are great answers, really. Thank okay. you. Okay. Okay, I've got one more question for you. Okay. So you are talking to all the aspiring actors, actresses, filmmakers, artists, dancers, writers, everybody out there. I want to hear Pisay's bullet points for NFA. What are the steps they can take, <laughs> you would suggest for them to take, to get from where they are to where they want to be? I thought we've been talking about that. Holy smokes. Okay. Uh, let's see my bullet points for not effing around and getting your creative dreams off the ground. Thank you. First and foremost, <laughs> tell the truth. Okay. Once you realize what your truth is, and that's a big one. That's the biggest one, right, is you tell the truth about what you really really want. And then not only that, you have to tell the truth about how are you going to get there, right? You can't just say, I want to be a rock star. Okay, done. <laughs> you tell the truth about what you really want and why, you know, question yourself, you're a detective in your own life. And then um, you make a plan for how you're going to get there. And then um, you find ways to implement that plan. Um, That's it. Can you believe it? All my long-winded answers and all I have are three things. Um, oh, and to, con and to continuously check in with yourself. Continuously check in with where you're at with those goals, with where you are at with the truth, your truth. Um, you know, if, you're, if you still desire the things that you thought you desired and, and um, you know, lists really helped me a lot. I love making lists and I love working backwards. Um, something that I've been doing is like, okay, where do I want to be in nine months? So if I have to be there in nine months, where do I have to be in six months? And if I want to be there in six months, where do I want to be in three months? So I work backwards in that way. And then just yesterday I was doing this. I was looking at my three months goal. I have another month before, you know, I reach there, reach it. But it's really simple. It's like, um, I'll give you something really simple. I, you know, I, I, I live part time in Seattle and Los Angeles, um, and I usually stay with my parents or my brother. But I'm sick of that. You know, I'm a grown woman. I want my own place. So I wrote that in nine months, I want to have a condo or some place of my own in Seattle. It sounds really overwhelming, even for someone like me. If people think like you're on TV, you make all this money. Um, but like we're talking about having two places, so that's pretty luxurious. Um, so at nine months, I want my own place. Where do I want to? Where do I have to be at six months in order to get my own place? Um, I wrote down that I have to be talking to real estate agents and and looking at places. That's not bad. I can look at places. You know, I can talk to a real estate agent. In three months, where do I have to be? Um, well, I guess I should make a list of where I want to live and what I want my apartment to look like. And I'm like. That's really easy too. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like when you break down the steps in that way, it's not as overwhelming. Um, but those steps slowly and surely will lead you to your goals if you stay focused and you stay intentional. So 
think that's it. Okay. All right. Tell the truth. Make a plan on how you're going to achieve your truth. Implement the plan and check in with yourself, you know? Hell yeah. You yeah. got it. Yeah. Thank you. That's Thank you. That was beautiful. <laughs> what a great interview. Thank oh my you. gosh. Thank you Thank so much you. for sharing all your wisdom and goodness with the world. We really appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time to chat with me and to listen to wah, 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 wah.